Next week, I will be going to Nicaragua to speak at a Reformed Conference, a conference celebrating the Reformation Movement uh, that began with an emphasis on five core values. Five core values. Reformed thought as a label is not that important. Labels are not important at all. But what they represent, the truths they represent, are the five core values of the Reformed thought, Reformed theology, Reformed faith are scriptures alone, Christ alone, faith alone, grace alone, and to the glory of God alone. These five, and these five. Today, we'll be focusing on the first of those, which is scriptures alone. The scriptures alone, and for that, we will be going to the classic passage on the authority of scriptures, of the scriptures, and that's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. There it is. The word of God is our authority for all of life and especially for public worship. That means if, the, if we have no support in Scripture for it, we don't do it in public worship. We don't do it in life at all. This is what is known in Reformed thought, Reformed faith, as a regulative principle. And specifically when it comes to public worship, regulative principle of worship. It regulates our worship. It regulates our life of worship, the principle that the word of God has authority over everything. And without that authority, we do nothing. This is our covenant. This is our covenant before God. There are things in here that we don't fully understand, just like the covenants we use on a day-to-day -day basis. We don't fully understand. We don't read all of the fine print. But this is our covenant before God. When we believed in Jesus as Lord and Savior, we have submitted to living under this covenant. This covenant that was blood-bought for us, inspired by the Holy Spirit sent to us at the cost of Jesus' blood. Through the sacrifice of Jesus, the Holy Spirit was sent. And the Holy Spirit came and wrote the very words of God. Breathe out by God is the language that is given here. And we have the very word of God, and this is our authority. What was the church bucking up against when it got kicked out of the Roman Catholic Church? The authority of tradition. There are many parts of the Roman Catholic Church even, even today that hold that tradition and the Bible have the same authority. There are many pockets in Roman Catholicism today, at least in practice, they emphasize the authority of the Word of God. And that's good news. That is good news. Now, for evangelicalism, of which we are a part, Reformed faith is a part of the evangelical Protestant church. We can't point the finger at the Roman Catholic Church for not reading their Bibles. Because we don't read our Bibles either. We do lip service and we say that it has authority over all of our lives. But we don't read the Bible. In general, we just, all of the, sur all of the service, surveys say that the Protestant Church does not read the Bible. Now there are some churches who read their Bibles believe in the authority of Scripture, and because of that, day by day, engage with God in the Word of God. It is preached from the pulpits. It is read in the homes. Yes, centered. Their lives are centered on God's Word. But many of, for many of us, 
Christianity is just a religion. Because we should have religion. Civilized society should have religion. It promotes a moral culture. And so it's a part of the culture. And so it's a part of tradition. It's exactly the same. We don't, we don't read the word of God because functionally it has no authority over our lives. We go to church because it's our habit. It's our tradition. We cannot point the finger here. What is another reason why? And here's something that is maybe even unique or characteristic of the evangelical church today. That is, we have another authority. Not tradition so much, but subjective experience. We want to hear the voice of God. We want to feel the movement of God. We want to see teeth turn golden. What, what, what? what was that? Where did that come from, Pastor Paul? Yeah, there are actually pockets of us who say that they, their teeth have turned golden when the Holy Spirit came and moved among the church, seeing gold dust everywhere. All these kinds of <coughs> extreme, felt, temporary, temporary experiences and movements. And by emphasizing that, we have de-emphasized. Emphasizing the authority of that, we have de-emphasized the authority of the scriptures. God consistently and constantly speaks through his living word, and yet we opt for something else. To hear with our ears, to feel with our emotions, to touch with our hands, and that becomes our functional authority. I've seen people so in love with the Lord, willing to make a fool of themselves in the worship service, shaking their heads, just all the fluids draining from their body, pretty much. Okay, that was too much. But anyway, uh, and yet, I'm thinking with these guys, yeah, they love the Lord. They must love His Word, so I give them the study Bible. I find out later, they don't spend any time in it. They don't care about the Bible. All they're looking for is that next experience. That is not healthy, my beloved. That is not healthy. What is healthy is to encounter God daily in His Word. To hear His voice from His Word. Not for the Reformed faith's sake, but for Jesus' sake. Let's love his word. Let's become people of the word. Let's not just give the functional nod to the word that it has authority over our lives and tuck it away like we do with a lot of contracts in our lives. But no, no, we must put it into practice. On the Lord's day, hear it preached. Throughout the week, apply it and spend time in it. Hide it in our hearts so that the living word is active as the Holy Spirit draws from our hearts the words he has inspired and he has planted. My encouragement to you today, the first point in the five core emphases of the Reformed faith. Scripture alone.
unending love, amazing grace. It was through that grace you granted us your Holy Spirit. And it is through that grace, the grace of your Holy Spirit, that you gave us your word daily, engulfing us with your presence and filling us with your wisdom. Lord God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Help us to live now and always by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.